so old. <laughs> to the Aston Martin Vanquish S Volante. Now, as I'm sure you can hear, this thing is a symphony of cylinders that just explodes into your ear. And the best thing about it is, you can have fun with it while you're going slow. But we'll get round to that in a minute. Let's introduce this fabulous marvel of British engineering. So this is it. This is Aston Martin's latest car. So late is it that I'm currently under embargo. I'm filming this in May and it can't drop until June. So welcome to June, everybody. And what is it? Well, I'm sure you guys have seen the Vanquish S. Well, this is its drop top counterpart, as you can hear. It is a naturally aspirated engine, and that, I guess, is what makes this car quite significant, because chances are, this is going to be the last naturally aspirated V12 to make it into a series production Aston Martin, which is a shame, because the correlation between my smile glands and that accelerator is direct. I mean, just... <laughs> I'd go so far as to say, that whoa, my cheeks are so in tune with this exhaust that a good stint in this car will leave you stepping out with face ache. <laughs> you can't help but just listen to it. It's like a spitfire for the road. <laughs> this is a totally stuck exhaust. This is a totally stuck car. I picked this up from the factory and it, it sounds aftermarket. It just, look at that. Who does that? <laughs> I could go on about this quite a lot. We are in an era where cars are gradually all going turbocharged. Even Aston Martin's latest new model, the DB11, and that's gone turbocharged. They still sound great, but just generally, just by the inherent nature of turbocharging, you're not gonna get a sound like this out of future cars. The industry's going turbocharged, and so naturally aspirated V12s in a modern day supercar is something to celebrate and something to behold. And of course, what Aston have very kindly done for us is given us this portal into which we can make the most of this sound. Now, if you thought the sound was good a minute ago, put your listening holes on some of this. Normally, I wouldn't complain about traffic lights, but uh, this thing is so loud that it's the only opportunity I've got that you can hear what I'm saying. So what have we got? But it's pushing out the best part of 600 brake horsepower, and it is mated to their latest uh, Gen 3 gearbox. Now, it's not a twin clutch. It is more of a conventional auto, but it is a ZF box. And for anyone who may not know, ZF, <laughs> they make some of the best gearboxes in the world. Now, I normally, if you watch my channel regularly, I often say that I'm either a twin clutch gearbox guy or a manual guy. I generally don't like the sloshy stuff that hangs around in the middle. But the thing is, this car is more of a Grand Tourer, okay? And doing no injustice or disservice to the engine in this it is while it is a fabulous growling and, and you've heard it it sounds magnificent this car while all of its components are fabulous the engine character is a little bit more chill it doesn't rev super high i think it tops out around about seven thousand and as a result it doesn't have the revs available to justify having a super 
responsive twin clutch gearbox. And so what happens is as you step in this car, your whole demeanor changes. Now on paper, you would read this as being a supercar. Six liter, 600 horsepower, naturally aspirated V12 with the aesthetics of this thing. I mean, I mean aesthetically, normally I am pretty subjective about aesthetics because I know they're very personal. But Aston Martin, I've never met someone who doesn't like the look of an Aston. So I'm gonna go out there and say that this is one of the best looking Grand Tourers ever made. Certainly one of the best sounding. Good Lord, yes. Listen to the overrun. <laughs> I got sidetracked, sorry. Going back to this gearbox, you can hear when I downshift, it sort of spools up. It doesn't explode down with the force of a twin clutch box that might be mated to a more sporty car or sporty driving experience. But that's not the point. When you get in this thing, I mean, I'm going 40, 40 miles an hour, and you listen to how it sounds. So you step in and you assume this much more chilled demeanor. I'd go so far as to say that this is the car that I've had the most fun in while chilling out. Normally you get in a car which has the, these details on paper and you think, let's attack it, let's grab it by the scruff of its neck, drive it 10 tenths, rev it out. You don't need to in this. Look, you just tap it down a few times. Listen to this. Steering rack's too fast. It's more like a 458 rack. Whereas in this, 
you get in it and it is a lot more chilled. You don't have to sort of be consciously thinking about your levels of steering input. You can generally just chill along. But while having said that, when you do pitch this thing into a corner, there isn't this great deal of weight transfer. Now, it's not a track car by any means. There is still a sort of degree of chill which you'll find in the body roll but it doesn't compromise it. You could still grab this thing by the scruff of its neck and thread it down a country road without thinking that it's a big wallowy boat. Now, this series that I'm filming, while I hope I am bringing some uh, info and entertainment to you guys, for those of you who watch my channel regularly will know that I am genuinely considering a convertible of sorts. I don't know whether it will be a Targa, a convertible, I don't know, a Spider. Um, but driving this car is genuinely part of my hunt for uh, a convertible car experience, namely because I've never owned one. Uh, and over the last few years, I've spent more and more time in them. And every time I get in them, there's such a sense of occasion. When you take the roof off this thing, the added drama is endless. It's beyond description just how much of a connection, an added layer of connection that you end up having with this car, with your surrounding environment. Part of my research, as it were, was driving the Rolls-Royce Dawn. Now, the contrast in cars is huge. The only similarities really is the fact that it's got a steering wheel and the roof comes off. There was no real sense of occasion from the Dawn in terms of engine noise, but I've had this car now for three days and over the past couple of days, I've gone to pick up friends and we typically hang out in a group of four. I managed to squash my mate Eddie in the back of it, um, which was in itself hilarious for about half an hour. But the real shame is that I think because this car is a Grand Tour and, and it isn't all about the sort of last degree of speed and lap times, I love to be able to share these cars with friends. The Dawn nailed that. Now, if you're planning on just you and your wife or the girlfriend swanning on down to the south of France and you want to listen to one of the most fabulous engine notes resonating off those mountain walls, I don't know where else you'd look. In fact, you'd be daft to look anywhere else. This thing is sublime. But if you want to share it, if you want to get your mates in the back, have the music on and cruise around and enjoy it together, I think something else might take your fancy. I've only ever experienced the dawn and that truly is a road yacht. The level of sort of sophistication of that, dare I say it, would go over and above even on this. <laughs> I was just about to summarize this car, but as simple as it sounds, this pretty much sums it all up.